Hi, so welcome to the next episode of this STM32 with LoRa module. So in this video, we will first look into where you can buy a LoRa module, what is its price and specs, and then uh, where you can download the materials required, like the resource materials, like data sheets, and then the repository links. Like if somebody is working on some other than STM controller, then there are C projects and GitHub repositories available uh, from which they can use it okay so let's go and see how we can do so first of all the thing is that if you want to buy a lora module which i am using so i am using this sx1262 b version so i bought it from this website this is robu.in so this is a, a indian website so i bought it in india so if i go there its price is around 399 okay so this is pretty cheap in comparison with the other lora module that are available so as you can see that this is the name of the lora module this is isc sx256 and this is the same lora module that i am using in my project so this is about the lora module and now you can look into the specification of it so this is what it is about Okay, it has an processor as Atom and frequency is 2.4 gigahertz. RAM is 610 and these all things, but that's not much of our interest. So you can also download the data sheet from here. And in description, you can see that this is for long range communication. It is RF means meaning it's a radio frequency. Operates at 868 megahertz frequency for reliable connectivity. So it is for equipped with external antenna for enhanced signal. So you can connect an antenna over this location here uh, so that you can get an extended signal range. Okay, so this is about where you can buy it. So now let's look into where you can download the data sheet. So if I search about LoRa SX1262 data sheet, so then it will get me to this website. Okay, this is a Germany developed module. Okay, as per the website, I could understand. So from here, you can download each and everything uh, regarding related to this module, like you can download the documentations. Okay, let's see. So here you have the data sheet and documentation related info. So you can click and download the data sheet. Uh, you have the application note related thing. You can go through it and read it. But the most important part here is this one. That is this LoRa library. So with code example, so this is the two major important thing that you should have this is WSD003, this one, and this is the actual LoRa driver repository. If you click on this, it will take you to the GitHub page where you have this uh, LoRa drivers available. So it has both the C files required for the LoRa driver functionality. Okay, you have the all the C files related to the LoRa driver. So if you go back, so there is some description in the readme file so here only what you have to do is this field needs to be implemented by the user basically this should contain so we have to write this sx126x hal.c file so you have to write this c file because this c file will be dependent on the controller that we will be using to communicate with the lora module this should mainly contain the uh, HAL drivers uh, that are applicable for that specific controller having the SPI drivers. So mainly these this is mainly depends upon the how the SPI drivers are um, like implemented in your controller. Okay, so that is the HAL file that we have to write from ourselves and rest of the function are already been written by them. So basically these are the HAL function that we need to write where we have a reset, wake up, write and read functionalities. Okay, so we will look into each of these uh, functions, how we will be writing it for the STM module and going ahead step by step. So I hope up to this it is clear. Okay, so now I will be taking you to the pinouts of the LoRa module that is present in the uh, your um, data sheet and we will go through it to have a good understanding on it. Okay, so now I have downloaded already the data sheet as you can see. Here, this is the data sheet of this uh, LoRa module, which I am using. And if I scroll down, I could able to see this LoRa module layout. So this is mainly for your wiring purpose will be used. And then we have the pinout description of the LoRa module. So the first one is antenna. 
ground 3.3 volt reset then it is transfer enable some and dio1 this is the configurable digital input outputs and then on the other side we have this ground busy so i will be explaining you the pin what this pin will do so antenna is i think pretty clear ground is also clear 3.3 volt is the power supply to this chip so i would suggest that you should maintain this 3.3 volt supply voltage okay then reset pin is the is the is the signal supplied from the user controller to this module to reset this module so this pin should ideally be always high if this goes down then the uh, then this uh, sx uh, lora module will reset itself then i will not be using this rf control port i will be using this dio configuration dio signal dio1 so dio1 is a software configurable signal so you can configure this dio1 in this uh, lora module so that this dio1 will act as an uh, interrupt so whenever the ic completes something you can you can configure dio1 in a way that whenever this lora module transmits something or receives something it will generate an interrupt okay so i can i will be configuring this dio1 to generate an interrupt okay in the lora module then we are not using dio3 and 2 and 3 but if your project has a requirement you can use it then ground is pretty much clear then we have the busy pin so this pin is mainly showing the status of that controller the lora module if this busy pin is high that means that the controller is transmitting or is receiving and it is doing some activity it is busy it cannot uh, receive any kind of command or it cannot give you any kind of status so that is the busy pin so as it has mentioned that status indicator pin which must be connected to the io port of the master mcu this rx enable we are not using then we have this spi clock input so spi clock input is the for the uh, spi connection we mainly use four types of pins one is clock one is data uh, in data out and then the chip select so here we have miso mossy and nss and sck that is the clock so these are the spi related pins and then there is ground so it is pretty much clear that which all pins we are going to be using in our project okay okay for further clarity let look into the pins that we are going to use so we will be using we will be connecting the ground pin to the ground 3.3 to the 3.3 pin uh, and a reset so this reset should be i will be writing as uh, so this i can write as a gpio and i can write as a gpio and this will be always high then txen we are not using and then dio we will this okay so i can make it in a good way like this will something will be coming from the master going to it and dio is something that will be coming from the this ic and going to our master controller so this will also be connected to one gpio so dio will be acting as an interrupt so we need to con, con, we need to make this pin as an external interrupt in our controller side so that's it for the gpio on this side when we move to this side this is nothing but the chip select so this is the cs chip select this also has to be high so and this is the mossy master out slave in so this is also the pin that we are going to use and then we have this master in slave out which are we are going to use and then we have the clock so these are the pins that is required for the spi communication and then we have the busy pin so this busy pin will be connected to a gpio so this busy pin gpio will uh, give us the indication that whether this is free or working so basically we will be using this nss miso mossy clock and then we are using this busy and here only dio and uh, this is reset we are only going to use in our pin configuration in this controller okay so i hope this is clear so we will be doing the configuration in the stm cube id as per the things that we just now decided so let's move into that
so i am into stm cube id okay so i will be creating one stm32 project okay so now i will be selecting the board so for this configuration i will be using the uh, nucleo board that is f401 or if okay i what i will do is i will use the same board for the configuration okay so for that i need to know the pin number and the ic details of this okay so the part number of the microcontroller is this one stm32 f401 ccu6 so we will try to find it in cube ide so in this selector we can just search it u6 okay so we will be selecting this controller package with qnf48 so let's reconfirm it once again so it is q in qfpn48 so we selected that we will do next okay let's give the name as laura let's say master and just press next and press finish okay now the controller is here so first let's do the configuration let's first enable the debug pins we'll do a serial while debug then in this board we have crystal ceramic oscillators okay so from now onwards please pay close attention for the configuration that i am doing so we go to the clock you should select the hse high speed crystal so in your this can be different so for my end it is i am using this so we have this one connected as it has written 45 megahertz crystal and lse has 32.7 kilohertz crystal so we put that and here i wanted to make it 72 megahertz okay so we have 72 megahertz clock configured okay so now most of the things are done here so we will go to connectivity in connectivity you need to have spi1 selected for spi1 you need to select this full duplex master so it has given already you the pins which will be connected to the spi so in here you the format will be motorola and the data size should be 8 msb should be first so prescaler you should maintain in such a way that this is less than 10 megabits per second it should be lower than 10 megabit so i am choosing 8 so that's fine and now you you have to configure the other pins as well so that's all for the spi com configuration okay and now what i will be doing i will be configuring some of the pin uh, for this miso mossy and uh, sorry not for miso mossy so i will be configuring the pins for this one this reset dio1 and then clock so let's look into it so it is easy to configure the pins of pa so pa1 pa2 pa3 like that we can go on so let's start with the pa1 so pa1 we can configure as gpio out okay so this will be an output from our end so just give the user le level as rst so this is the reset pin then we have the nss so that also is the out so nss means the chip select so this is the nss and uh, we also need to have one input that is the busy pin so we can rename it as a busy and then we have another input but that has to be an interrupt to us that is pa4 we will be configuring as an interrupt and this we will call as dio1 so i have configured this gpios so we need to do one more thing that we need to configure the gpios in a proper manner so let's do that part so first thing is reset so this reset should always be high so the output part should always be high same uh, with the nss so nss should uh, the gpio output level you have to set it as high so that's it for these things then for bz and dio it is fine 
so for busy and dio it's fine but we need to configure the line interrupt for this dio as we have configured it as the interrupt external interrupt so we configure the external interrupt okay to send and receive some uh, values we also need to configure some uh, thing on this ic like to understand the indication so if i go to the pin you can see that we have some user led connected so if you go here the user led is connected to pc 13 so let's connect it as a gpio out and let's give it a level as led so that's it for this one and pa0 is a wake up so one button is connected to pa0 so this one we can configure it as gpio input as this will okay we will configure is an external interrupt also for this and i will rename it as a btn button so for this one also we need to enable the interrupt so once this these all are done let's go to the interrupt part and let's just verify that everything is ticked yes okay everything is done so i think that's it for this part like we have configured all the pins and i have shown what all configuration has to be done for each of this pin so i will show you once more time so you can see each of the pins are configured like this so so maximum output low and uh, the gpi for the outputs so it should be active high most of the time okay only this pc 13 that is led we have kept it low okay so you can save it and it will generate the code for you okay so up to this part we have done the configuration of the master mcu to connect to the module so in the next video i will be importing the libraries from the github repositories and we will be writing the drivers to configure the lora module okay so that's all for this video thank you hi so if you guys have watched till end then i would just suggest please uh, do subscribe and like this video and press the bell icon to get more uh, notification from my channel when i upload uh, such videos on embedded systems so it will be a great support to me and my channel if you subscribe and like this video it encourages me to make more videos on this uh, embedded systems so that's all uh, thank you and bye